Welcome to Napa Valley, known for our hospitality and great wine. We're gonna look at some contemporary art today, savor a bottle of wine, check out some brandy. Let's get going. Welcome to the Real Art District. Founded in 2016 in the heart of downtown Napa, it stretches for two miles. It includes sculptures, installations, and murals like this one, knocking on heaven's door, which signifies hope and never giving up. California has been devastated by wildfires the last five or six years. This mural behind me signifies the heroes and honors them. It's called Rolling Portrait of a Firefighter. Now we're heading over to Carneros to get some sparkling. Let's check it out. Welcome to Domain Carneros. Thank you very much, sir. So we're sitting here and we just saw the Sabraj experience. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the history of it, why Domain has as an experience here. Well, number one, we have the experience because it's fun. I mean, who doesn't want to wave a sword around and, and knock the top off a bottle? But the history is kind of couched in a little bit of myth, like a lot of wine stories, right? The legend with the most traction, if you will, is the one when Napoleon's cavalry soldiers would carry light swords, sabers. You know, it's just a matter of convenience, you know, if you got thirsty. But I mean, we do it now for the tradition, for the spectacle, and for the fun. The legendary Eileen Crane stepped down. Eileen was certainly at the vanguard of women leadership in the Napa Valley. You know, it's really going from strength to strength, going from Eileen and then passing the baton to Remy to take that next chapter of Domain Carneros. What pairings do you recommend with some of the sparklings that we have? There's a short answer and a long answer. Okay. Which one do you want? I'll take the short one. <laughs> <laughs> the traditional thing, for example, would be like salted foods go great. I pop popcorn at home Ooh. with olive oil. It's really, really good. But when you really dive into the oeuvre of the Domaine Carneros wines, you expand out of that. It's not just wine and cheese, right? It's not just at your birthday or your anniversary. How about Tuesday night? How about before dinner? I love to hear, you know, there's different methods for making sparkling. All of the sparkling wines are fermented in the bottle. It's an individual entity. They're handmade expressions of our estate-grown Carneros terroir. So I'm gonna allow you to pick which wine we're gonna end this out with. It's gotta be Larev. All right, going for the Larev. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. Appreciate you, and I love Domain Carneros. So nice to meet you, thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Ooh, that was a good one, Dan. Yeah, though. that was. I just got my sparkling on Domain Carneros. Now I'm on First Street in downtown Napa, ready to feel the spirit in California Brandy House. Let's head on in. What is a Brandy House doing in like Napa, California? What we love to do at the California Brandy House is educate our guests on the state's first spirit. We make a wine and then we distill it and age it in barrels anywhere from three to 40 years. And the result is, is this. Cheers. Cheers huh? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm a fan. Good. <laughs> and in the process of going through these brandies, we're happy to show kind of the different production methods. And we have the ability to innovate by using all these different grape varieties, different distillation methods that are unique to us. And there's such a rich history. It has mm -hmm. such a reason to belong here in the state. And uh, the liquid's really good too. I think it's an etching experience here. Like you guys etch bottles for a customer. Is that like on site? Our staff can engrave a bottle kind of on the fly. You find a bottle that really sticks out to you and you want to commemorate uh, this day or a moment with you know a loved one, um, you can let our staff know, and by the time you're tasting this finish, you can walk away with the bottle of your choice. Okay, I have an umlaut, those two dots above my E. Like, is that something that you can incorporate? Or? Yeah, we, we have cutting edge technology, so we can <laughs> handle the, the umlauts as well. Why should someone come to the Brandy House? And I would put it to you like this. When you get off the plane in Louisville, Kentucky, are you gonna go order a gin drink at the bar? No, you're in bourbon country, right? Mm -hmm. So you might have an old fashioned or a Manhattan. And we think with the history and the quality of, of the spirits that are made in the state, when you get off the plane in a couple of years, you go to a great cocktail bar, you're gonna be welcome to the Golden State with a California brandy cocktail. Cheers to that. We'll close this out to Napa, to a great spot on First Street, and to Brandy House. Cheers to you. You're welcome anytime. Thank you very much, sir. Pleasure. All right, I just felt the spirit at California Brandy House, and now I'm at Hall Wines. I'm about to speak with Megan Gunnison, their winemaker. Let's head inside and have a chat. 
It's one of the coolest places to work. We're a family-owned winery, and we're really um, specializing in Napa Valley Cabernet. I hear you source grapes from quite a few different places around the valley. We do, and each one of these areas is really unique. So we're talking about soil, climate, and then elevation and aspect. We like to make big, bold, flavorful wines that are balanced and representative of where they're grown. You know, what we're doing here is pretty incredible. I don't know of too many other producers here in Napa that make 18 to 20 different unique Cabernets based on the vintage. Combined with the views, the art, all of the different tasting experiences we offer here. I heard you guys have been LED Gold Certified for quite a while. Sustainability, organic farming, and being environmentally friendly is very, very important to us. And then also, what is, um, I'm gonna say it wrong, Bunny Fufu? Is bunny, it bunny Fufu, Bunny Fufu, yes. Okay. Craig and Catherine Hall um, love art, and Bunny Fufu is um, a giant stainless steel rabbit leaping out of the vineyard by Lawrence Argent. When Craig and Catherine were designing this piece with Lawrence, they were referencing Catherine's childhood, so she grew up on a vineyard in Mendocino. And when she started taking her kids there, they would sing Little Bunny Foo Foo. So it's just kind of a full circle, really cool art piece. Thank you for making my experience. Cheers. Cheers. One of the many reasons to come to Napa Valley this time of year is the blooming of the wild mustard flowers. Also, we're here at Baldacci Family Winery, and we're about to check out some estate cabs in their wine cave. Let's head on in for our final stop. Welcome to Baldacci. Thank you. Got some bubbles for you All here. All right, I'm ready. Can we cheers? Of course. All right, so a great visit. Cheers. Thank you. Baldacci Family Wines is known for being a cab house, mm -hmm. so what am I drinking right now? So this is our 2018 Oakville Cabernet. Mm -hmm. This is 100% Cabernet and single vineyard. There's a lot of family wineries in the valley. Like what sets this one apart. Our winemaker is actually Michael Baldacci. Our founder, Tom Baldacci, is mm -hmm. second oldest son. You know, at the end of the day, it's the Baldacci name on the bottle, right? Being family owned and operated in the true sense where family is, you know, actually on the property and are really paying attention to everything that's going on. I think that really comes through in the wines that we're producing. I mean, these are excellent and I'm a cab lover and I hear there's a wine cave. Like, is that something that we can go check out? Maybe. We can possibly make that happen. Can yeah. We, can we bring the wine with we us? We can definitely bring the wine with us. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Let's head over right yeah. now. Is that cool? Perfect. Yeah. Let's take a little walk. All right. Oftentimes when, you know, people are coming in, maybe it's their first trip to Napa Valley, they might not have the vocabulary yet to be able to describe the wines. And so that's really what this experience that I designed, that's the goal of it. You know, I think sometimes wine is just meant to be enjoyed, but I think once you have that vocabulary, once you have some of those tools, then it can increase your enjoyment of wine in the end. The more that you can get out of it, the better your experience is gonna be. Thank you for joining me on this Napa Valley experience. It's been a great journey. Remember when you visit, the most important thing is the people. Cheers. <laughs>